Recording is on. Okay, we're here with another Plenty Devlog series. We're taking a look at some CMS updates. We're joined with Stephanie. Hello, Stephanie. Hi, Jim. Uh, so I've been working with a developer, Jesse, on some different media updates. Um, recently, he had pushed out a change to basically build an index for our media assets. And then I've gone through in the last week and basically converted these into a display. Um, previously, we had them in a sidebar. Now we have them in a pop-up and we have some more actions on them. So I want to take a look at those, maybe look at some code and we can uh, you know, ask questions and answer those as we go. How's that sound? Sounds great. Okay. Let me share my screen. And I'm going to start by serving up a plenty site. Just run plenty serve, and then we'll open up a new window over here in Chrome. And I'll just go to that URL for the plenty site. Can you see this? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we log in. Uh, basically, the starter has a, a login button. It's pretty easy. There's a user object in every plenty site that you can use, and just user.login will allow you to have a login button. So it's a magic prop that you can use. And then essentially, uh, we use GitLab as a backend. So I'm going to come over to GitLab and I'll just sign in over here. And when you sign in like that, you will start getting uh, an admin bar at the top here. So we've looked at this before, mm -hmm. right? So this is what you'd use to like edit your content, right? So you can mm -hmm. make changes like that. Uh, the new thing is the media browser. So previously, this was a right-hand sidebar. Now, if you click on media, you get a pop-up here. So it kind of nice. takes over your screen like this. Um, you could close out of it using this um, button in the upper right. That's really just a visual cue. You can actually click anywhere outside of this um, in the grayed out area to close out of this. Now, the advantage of something like this is eventually this is going to not only tie into just our overall site media display, but it's going to tie into our content creation, right? So if we're over here and we're editing something and say this was a media field and you're interacting with it and you want to change your media, you could come in here and you could potentially click on a button that would pop up this thing in the same way. And then you could either upload a new file to add it to your content source, or you could come over to here to your library and you could browse this and look for pictures here that you can add in there. So that's kind of the thinking behind this. Um, a couple of updates here are uh, essentially when we come over to our library, we have more visual cues for interacting with our content. So for instance, um, let's uh, let's take this picture here. So you and I, and when you click it, you know, you can click it on or off essentially. Um, and there's a more of a visual cue. So previously you just have this, this light blue uh, border on the outside that was hard to see. Now we actually darken the image a little bit. We put this blue check mark in front of it. Um, and when you click on it, you get these additional actions that pop up. These pop, these actions aren't there when nothing's selected because you can't do anything if there's nothing selected there. But as soon as you start selecting um, different media, so you can select multiple, uh, you get these buttons that have some actions. So the first is to download the selected. So this will allow you to just like get this information locally. So maybe you want to manipulate this image to crop it or scale it or do something outside of the website. You could do that um, by downloading it locally. So if I click this, press download. So it says, I get, this is a Chrome feature. So if you're downloading multiple uh, files, it asks for permission. So I can say allow. And when it does that, you can see that both of these just downloaded locally here. Uh, and I could pop these up and I could take a look at these. With these. So that's a new action. Um, another thing you can do is you can actually delete selected files. So um, previously there's no delete action, but this will actually go and do a commit to our, um, our GitLab API, and it will change the backend of our website. So essentially, this will be hosted somewhere, and we don't have a backend server because it's just a static site, and that will allow us to do actions on the site. So let me switch over here real quick to um, our uh, our website that we have on the backend. So this is a site. It's just called BBB. Let me refresh this real quick. The last thing we did is we created 14 files. So I just uploaded files right before this so we can um, uh, you know, take a look at some of these together. So that's the last action that was created here. Let's come over here and let's do this delete action on these two files. And a couple things are going to happen. So I'm going to delete the selected media. Now you'll notice right on the front end, those media files disappeared completely, right? So they're they're gone from the front end of the app now. Um, if I were to even you know switch um, uh, views and come back to it, they're still gone. I could even get out of this completely and I could come back to the media browser, and those files are still gone from our media browser. So you're getting that immediate app-like experience where you're feeling like it's going away from your interface because we're changing the local props to remove those. Um, now on the back end, what's happening, and let me reload this, is it's actually going through here, and it's, it's doing that. So it's doing the deletion of two files. It looks like CI actually ran and rebuilt, um, but essentially what's happening is 
there's two different processes going on. It's your front end experience that you're you're getting that fast, snappy um, file deletion, but also in the background, while that's chugging along and it's you know pulling a CI container and doing a rebuild and doing that um, to actually have a server side rendered uh, experience. Uh, you, you know, you have both those worlds going on at the same time. And maybe that's a little confusing, but I just want to prove here that those files are being deleted on our server. And you can see here that there's delete actions here. Um, you can see uh, from from this here. Um, so yeah, is that, does that make sense? Is that kind of confusing? I know there's a lot going on, the, the whole idea of server versus client and CI and reloading. Th does that make sense to you, kind of what what's happening there in that experience? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And it's it's just really cool. That is really cool. Like, I've just never seen anything like that before. Yeah, I, I think it's like, so we, we're trying to bridge the gap between some of the challenges of, of the Jamstack, right? So Jamstack is great because it's lightweight, it's fast, it's secure, uh, it costs almost nothing to host. Um, you have all these advantages and you don't have the, you know, the, the, the weekly security updates that are, are kind of rolling out all the time, like in the CMS world. So it's cool from that perspective where you can uh, have that lightweight experience. The downside is like that disconnect between editing and having your display, right? So um, I'm editing right now, right? But when I'm doing an action, I'm actually using an API to go to GitLab and then it's doing a CI. So like, how do you have that experience work where you're not delaying and feeling like you're you know, okay, now I'm doing a build or I'm doing a deployment or something like that in between. And we're, we're trying to give both of those experiences, right? So you have the app-like experience here, but it's also a lightweight way to, to do it on the background. So I, I think we're, we're coming at a good, um, uh, coming at it from a good angle. Now there's some things that still need to be updated. So for instance, we really should have an experience here where we can upload new files like this, and then that should appear in our library. Right now, that's not quite the case. Um, so if I were to come here, um, let's go to fix and let's just grab a couple of the, actually, yeah, let's just grab this. Some of these pictures won't upload because there's files already with those names. So we would have naming conflicts. This one was just deleted, so that one might work. Um, these ones, there are already files that correspond to it, so we'd have to discard those. But essentially, again, the, the same selection happens here, right? So if I can select one of these, it changes discard all to discard selected. So we could just discard the selected like this, and then we could save our media here, our remaining media here. Um, and it says those changes are committed. Uh, now this should appear in the library. This is something that we still need to work on. So it's not automatically appearing in our library yet. That would be the next step for having this have a real true app-like experience. But you should see over here that this file will get created in our backend. So essentially what you would do is, you know, you'd have to wait for this to build. This is running right now. And this is kind of what I'm talking about the delay. So once that's done building, then it would automatically appear on a server refresh if you were to hard refresh on your, your website. Of course, that's not going to happen because right now we're, we're working locally and this is happening um, on our deployed site. So there's kind of a disconnect there, but that's just for this demo purpose. That's really cool. Thanks. Um, we can look at some of the code potentially here. So let's see. Um, so we have our media browser. Um, this is this is what's making up kind of the whole browsing experience in this gallery view over here. So this is our media browser, essentially. Um, and then this is pulling from a media grid. So a media grid is actually where those um, files are being displayed in the grid, um, uh, the grid area where you're actually displaying the little thumbnails. And this is being used for both the file upload and the um, the library, right? So like in our library experience or our upload experience, when you get the grid, you're kind of using that same experience there. Um, and essentially when we're um, going through and we're, we're making sure that we bind um, some of our props here so we can actually remove them from display. So that's how you do two-way binding. So essentially if you want to change something in a child component, so media grid is a child component. Um, and our, uh, our media browser is the parent component. So typically the data wants to flow from parent to child, but we want this in this case to flow back up. So when we delete something from our grid, our browser experience can get that as well. So we're doing some two-way binding there just to make sure that stuff is working the way we would want. So this is kind of um, what we're doing with our selected media here. Um, and essentially we're doing um, the same thing with our media list. So media list, just uh, for people who are developers who might want to get involved in this project, essentially this is just getting our media in a format that um, can be understood by the, the GitLab API. So what we do is we just wrap our um, media items essentially uh, in a JSON object for each media item where there's a file and there's a contents. So file is the file name and contents is like the actual thing that's being written. 
Um, and that all gets pushed to our published API here, which maybe we'll change the name of this because it's not only publishing, it's also deleting. Um, and essentially what we do is we can pull that out into our actions so we can figure out what, you know, what the file name is and then uh, what the content is. Now, when we're doing delete actions, there's actually, you don't need content. So we just pass null here. Um, but essentially this is, yeah, this is how this is working. And again, the encoding works a little different when we're passing images because we have base 64 strings. So essentially it's converting those bytes, uh, th those little binary blobs into something that the, can be passed over the wire easy and, and read and understood. So that's essentially what we're doing there to, to make that all work. Um, again, this is probably a little deep um, because it's some of the you know the, the code stuff, but um, if people are interested, I'm always happy to answer questions. If they want to take a look and get involved, then I'm, I'm always happy to, to take a look at that. Any questions on any of this stuff? No, I, I it's it's really cool. Um, I I'm like really amazed that you're able to update the interface so that even when the photo is not deleted, it's still showing that it's deleted and it's doing the work in the background. Um, it'll be cool if you can get that to work for uploads as well. Um, but yeah, I think it makes a lot of sense. It's uh, easily understood. Like I don't have to, I feel like I don't have to learn the system. Like it, it makes sense. So it's, it's pretty cool. Great. Yeah. And just if I can dream for a couple of seconds on some other things we might want to do, um, you know, this interface would be great if there were options here to do a couple of things. So first of all, copy the complete file path. So right now, you know, like it's, it should first, it should probably show what the file name is. It's nice. It has a display, but a file name would be really helpful to know that it's the exact file we want potentially. Um, and then also be able, you know, be able to copy that file path and then also be able to change that file path. So we might have subfolders in this case, we don't have any subfolders in our site. Um, I could probably demonstrate what that would be like. Let me take a look over here in the site. So we have our assets, right? Um, we have all those, but we could make a new dir called test. So I'm going to make a directory called test. And then let's maybe, um, let's move our assets named Pablo. So we have a couple there. So we'll do uh, move all those to uh, the test folder, right? So, um, so then if we plenty serve this and let's reload this page, come back here to, um, our, our media. So now we have a, a, a filter at the top, right? So it's this test filter. If we click on that, we have the Pablo images here. Um, so again, this is how filters and folders work. So essentially what maybe you would want this image here to also appear in the test folder, right? So there should be a way in the interface to actually change the location of this. And I, I want to make it intuitive. I, I, I hate the idea of going back to like the old school, like folder browser thing that people do, you know, like this, this kind of, like this kind of experience, right. Um, where you're like looking through folders, um, I mean, I don't know, maybe it's fine, but I, I don't love that experience. I'd like to do it in an intuitive way. Maybe it's just updating the path. I'm not sure. I need to think through that a little bit, but it'd be nice to be able to do something like put this in, you know, this here or, or, or vice versa um, and move things around. So that would be nice. Um, that's, that's on the to-do list. Another thing that would be nice um, is, well, this is essential is basically um, working with naming collisions. So if we come in here and we try to upload an image that already exists there. So if we try to do this again, so this worked previously, but if we do it now, it's going to say changes, could not commit the changes. And then this should give you a real error. And it should give you an option to, to you know, change those or, or fix those, those commits um, and make them work. But essentially that's a, a collision thing that we'll have to resolve at some point. So that's another thing on the to-do list to make this a little bit nicer. Again, there's some other little buggy things like the, so PDFs are, are, are previewed with a, like an embed. Um, which you can't click on. So you can't manage your PDF right now. It's just images that you can manage. So that's kind of wonky. Um, but yeah, there's some other things, but th they'll get better as we go and, and make improvements to this. But hopefully this is starting to get there. Um, so uh, yeah, that's kind of where we're at there. Um, I want to quickly show another thing. This is really early stage of what we're working on, but um, starting to add some WYSIWYG <laughs> abilities uh, into the editor. So essentially this is uh, a long text field. And you could do things like, this is a new paragraph, right? Um, and you know, you could really uh, extend what we're doing uh, here in terms of longer text field. And essentially what you can do now is you can decorate some of your text. So you could say, this is a GitLab. You could highlight this and bold this and say, this is a GitLab backend. Um, 
You can actually even do it right on the page itself. You could say, uh, maybe you want to emphasize something like um, CMS info. You could come here and highlight this on there and then click that and it will highlight it um, right on your uh, right on your um, display there. So this is something uh, that's really rough right now. I'm actually, and this is probably against the wisdom of everybody and we might change this, but right now I'm just demonstrating this by building my own small WYSIWYG, which um, has a lot of um, issues and it's just like a, a, a testing ground at this point. So WYSIWYGs are challenging. Um, so when you do things like intersections, they can be hard. So for instance, we have this bold, right? And on the back end, what bold actually looks like, um, let me load the JSON editor, it takes a second here. Um, basically you're wrapping those things in strong tags. That's what the WYSIWYG is doing on the back end. So if you do things like intersections where you highlight things like this, like, so if we were to highlight something like this, the WYSIWYG has to know, okay, what are we doing here? Like this part is bolded and maybe this part is being emphasized, but this part's emphasized as well. So where do we structure those tags? You get things like um, collisions. So if we were to try to do something like that right now, you would see um, something like, okay, we got some other errors, but okay, does the file name already exist? That's what we saw from that publish we just did a little while ago, but here, let's get another error here. So let's try something like this with a weird collision where we're going to uh, underline in between those tags, right? Um, oh, I don't know if that, uh, I thought that would, normally I thought that would pop up an error message. Essentially you're getting, um, it, it doesn't know how to, how to do that in between tags like that. So we'll have to, you know, figure that stuff out. And that's just the tip of the iceberg of how complicated these WYSIWYGs can get. So at some point we might want to pull in somebody else's project to, to make this a little easier or reuse some code that already exists that, that thinks about this stuff. But essentially this is just, I just want to share some of the experience that we're, we're moving forward on some of this to make the editing experience a little better. Um, you could picture this being like a big blog page, right? So some of these could be just like giant WYSIWYG fields where you can go and, you know, start blogging. Um, like this, um, I, now this um, little uh, this little um, editor widget it only goes vertical, so you can't you know get weird displays by going uh, you know left to right um, width wise. I would like to make this whole panel here um, adjustable at some point, so you can kind of adjust your display and your editing interface. But again, these are just things that are, are happening. Of course, this should also transition. So like this, this should not just be a, a quick, hard jump out. It should have some kind of nice transition, kind of like you have when you expand or close these things. Um, again, these are just small things that I'm thinking about and, and working on, but um, that, that will come with time. Sorry, that's a lot. Is there <laughs> anything here that you have questions about? No, no, that's great. Um, yeah, no, it's it's awesome. The, the intersection, does that create are there problems like say you bold something and then you italicize the same thing or is it just like you already bolded something and then you decided you wanted more of that paragraph bolded later yeah like what what is the issue in particular well let's take a there's you have to think about all those things right you have to think about how they're being layered right so um let, let's give it a shot so we have uh, let's open up this here Let's see if it will give us some errors or anything. Um, okay, so we have bold, right? So again, I'm not sure if this will be smart enough to add some. Okay, so it did. So you can mm -hmm. add bold, it added italics, right? And we could essentially come here and we could probably add underline as well, right? Okay, so we did all three. But if you look at the code over here, you'll see that it was smart enough to wrap them in some kind of meaningful way, right? So you had your bold tags and then inside your bold tags, you had your emphasize, this is your italic tags. And then essentially in the inside, it did the underlying tags, right? Mm -hmm. So it was able to, to do all three in a logical way. But um, let's, let's, uh, let's take a look at another section here, right? So we have links. Of course, we can't add links uh, in a meaningful way yet. But okay, so let's do something like, let's get these bolded, right? So we'll bold that. And then we'll grab from here to here and mm. we'll italicize this, right? Mm-hmm. So it didn't do anything. So previously, I thought this was erring. I'm, I can't remember what I did to, to change that, but it didn't do anything, right? So it doesn't know how to do that because it's going across those elements. Like it's like, it's not sure because it's not as simple. You couldn't just, you, you can't just really write tags like this, right? This isn't going to make much sense doing it like, like this, right? Um, although it does does work. Um, <laughs> I, I, I thought that'd be a strange kind of going across tags like that. Again, this I have to do some research to make sure this makes sense. I would think what you'd have to do is something like this. You'd have to actually like, okay, add like mm. a tag like that and then add another emphasize 
tag like this, right? Like you have to be mm -hmm. smart enough to be like, okay, um, wrapping tags, not across tags like that. Mm -hmm. and, and think about it that way. Um, and then this can get overly complicated. Now we're talking about like what happens when we want to remove them. So we're highlighting this text on the front end right here and we want to remove the emphasize, right? Okay, mm -hmm. like how does that handle that? And then how does it handle if we wrap the whole thing like this and we remove, does it remove the emphasis tag from this, you know, this two in this um, move? And then does it add it to things? Like how does that work? So mm -hmm. there's a lot of complicated logic there that would go on. So I probably best to use it, you know, code that somebody else has written to figure all this out because people have been inventing WYSIWYGs from the beginning of time. And I'm not sure we want to get into that game. Uh, I, I like the idea of, you know, keeping things really light because we don't, I, I'm the theory behind plenty is like not to have full giant WYSIWYG experiences. The way people used to build websites, it was just like, you get rid of all this stuff, right? And you basically have a title and you'd have like a huge WYSIWYG field. And it'd just be like, this would be like the whole experience, right? And like, it would just be like a giant field like this with a title. And then you just edit in here and people are breaking their sites all the time. I, I hate that experience. I think it's it's prone to um, breaking HTML that breaks your whole display of your site. I think it's um, uh, it, it's not very good responsively. It also invites people to break outside of your style guide. So people put images all sorts of weird places. They put them like in the center or on the left and the right and they're small and then they're, there's text. So like, I, I hate this experience. So as much as possible, I like to force people to think in components. Like if you want an image, have a, a defined image field and have that interact on the back end responsively uh, with your, your content. And then think about how that experience is. So I, I like the idea of actually limiting your WYSIWYG to just a few simple options to maybe add decorations to your text. But even that, I think you could get a little crazy. I, like most of the time, I wouldn't add the ability to add underlines. Like underlines, people like to use them, but I think they abuse them too. So um, I might even just go as far as like allowing somebody to add a little bit of emphasis and then we'll style it on the back end how we want that to emphasize. Um, for instance, like this is a link, right? Like give them a link ability, but we'll style what that looks like and how that interacts. Again, that's getting a little bit into theory, but that's that's basically where I think of this stuff. And that's kind of why we started this project with a JSON backend. JSON is like the a standardized web format that can be used, but basically want to have these things interact in a, in a meaningful way with just component-based architecture and writing that stuff back to JSON. Yeah? Yeah. Cool. So I don't know. I think we've probably exhausted our, our time for today. Is anything else that you, you're thinking of, like uh, ideas or comments or concerns or anything? No, I mean, I, I think like this this part of the, the website, like um, adding images, assets, like you've come a long way in a very short period of time. So I'm excited to see what else you're able to do in, sh in a short window. So. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. We're yeah. <laughs> trying to move it along as fast as possible. Um, yeah. I, I, I hope other folks want to get involved and, 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 you know, join us with writing some of the code or at least using it and, and letting us know what their experience is like. Uh, we'll have to do another release. So just people who are downloading at home, they're probably not going to see these recent changes. Maybe that's not... Um, apparent for a lot of people. So these changes we're writing locally and we'll push them back to the repository so you can see them. But in order to pull them down with like Snap or Homebrew or one of those package managers, you need an official release. And, you know, we don't release uh, every change that we make. We, we release them every you know few weeks or so. So um, maybe I'll push together a release so people can start testing some of this new media stuff. But it'd be great if people wanted to test and take a look at this. So um, again, leave comments on, on the videos or um, leave uh, issues in the issue queue on GitHub. Um, or tweet us or, or whatever. We'd love to hear our feedback on what people are thinking about this stuff. Um, are we going the right direction? Are, are we doing things that you you hate, you love? Let us know. Um, and we can use that to help us steer. Um, of course, sometimes we, <laughs> we've we made up our mind on some certain things and we go our own direction anyways, but we'd love to hear from you either way. So, um, cool. Hmm, All right. Great. All right, I think I'll stop the recording for now. Thanks, Steph. Okay. Thanks, Jim.